one of the big issues on the ballot in Florida this year is about whether we restore voting rights to people who've paid their debt to society. Our guest tonight is leading that fight. He's the founder of the Sarasota chapter of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition and a senior pastor at Mount Olive Church in Arcadia, Florida. Please welcome back to Pod Save America, Demetrius Jafunza. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for driving three hours to make it. Hey, anytime when I'm able to get to Miami, I'm there. Okay. Because I get to learn how to drive again. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so you're leading the efforts to pass Amendment 4. Um, you're also among those who can't vote right now. Exactly. Because of the, the very rules that you're trying to fix. Can you talk about your personal connection to this issue? Sure. Um, I was 18, well, 17 going on 18. Yeah. It was four individuals that um, made the long story short. I was charged and convicted of an armed robbery, of a conveyance. I received 47.25 months, so that was essentially three years minimum mandatory, followed by 11 months and two years probation. Yeah, in 1995 when that took place. And what is the history, just for people who don't know, about the way these rules work in Florida. You've said that these laws were actually designed specifically mm -hmm. to keep African Americans from voting. The history of the law, first of all, it's uh, 150 years old. Yeah. And it stems out of the Jim Crow era. Now, the thing that I want to be clear of is that the law is birthed out of racist practice, but it's not practice racist now because it's affecting everyone. Right. But the history of it is that, yes, it did stem from the Jim Crow era, and it was targeted towards African Americans during that time. And what's the most common argument you hear against this measure? And, and what do you say to people who are not sure about passing this? The biggest argument that I often hear is, why should we vote for you? Um, you've already displayed that you cannot follow the rules of our state. So why should I stand behind you and give you the right to vote for people in Congress that I have to adhere to? Well, my response to that is anyone that has made a bad choice, notice I did not say a mistake, but a bad choice, and they have paid their debt, well, they have done everything that was handed down to them, and they have come home, and they're living a successful life, and there are so many successful stories that I can share with you. Why not give them their civil rights back? Yeah. Then I say, well, since you have them, what are you going to do with them? Yeah. Just, what sure. are you going to do with them? You know, we, we, live, we live in a country that says that when the debt is paid, it's paid. So why, that, why does that not apply to those that have completed whatever sentence they have given in their home, they're living a successful life, they have paid their debt? Why not honor that? Um, we were talking backstage, and you were telling me that, you know, through this effort to get this measure passed, right. So many people were understanding this issue for the first time. Yeah. What has this been like, sort of trying to educate people about? Oh, man, it, it makes me feel good when I get to share this information because it, it puts me in a position that I have the, I'm the genius of this particular subject, <laughs> you know? For so many years before this has actually had the movement that it has now, many people had no idea. They just thought that if you commit a crime and you have a felony, you bar from voting and Sometimes you, many people thought that you cannot get your rights back in every state. They thought that it was actually the law of the land. But over the time, we've allowed ourselves to educate people to say that, hey, it is just a cabinet of three individuals based on an opinion whether you should have your civil rights back or not. So This is just Governor Rick Scott and a Governor, couple of people deciding one person by person that's whether it. they have their civil rights back and whether they can vote. Exactly. That's how, this, that's how the system works right That's now. how it is. And if you ever go to a clemency hearing, some of the questions have nothing to do with one's civil rights. It, some of the questions are, do you go to church? How often do you go to church? How often do you make love to your wife? Well, I may not love my wife anymore, you know? <laughs> but I love my wife. 
But <laughs> not in your case. Not in my case. Good. But that, that is what we're up against. And so the thing is, is that when we are able to tell people that, yes, this, the law is that a law has been broken. You have served your time. You're home now. You're still following the law by staying out and you're doing things with your life. Yeah. But to get your civil rights back, you supersede the law and go to an opinion of individuals who know nothing about you. That's not right. Um, last time you and I talked, you told me that this is the kind of issue that could completely change someone's life if they exactly. get their voting rights back. How would it change your life if this passed? Uh, tremendously. First of all, it will feel that I have taken everything a large burden off my shoulders. Um, secondly, it would allow me to look in the mirror and say, Florida gets it. They actually get it. Because I've done everything. I've beat all the statistics. I've overcome so much. And even though I have overcome all of that, I still can't fight. But the most important thing is I have three young, beautiful children. I can't even fight for them the way that I should be able to fight. So this law being passed is not just for me. You're actually giving my children the opportunity as well.